Hello, everyone. This is just a short introduction to a philosophy called existentialism. It's for some of my more advanced English students. Maybe if you're interested in philosophy or advanced vocabulary or something like that, you might find this interesting. But it's going to be kind of difficult language and it's philosophical. So if you don't like philosophy, it might not be right for you. But let's check out this slideshow Introduction to Existentialism. Okay, so the origins. A good website for checking out philosophical material is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. That's where I got some of this information. So, number one, like rationalism and empiricism, existentialism is a term that belongs to intellectual history. The term was explicitly adopted as a self description by Jean Paul Sartre. Existentialism became identified with a cultural movement that flourished in Europe. In the 1940s and 1950s. Some major philosophers under this title were Heidegger, Jaspers, Camus, and de Beauvoir. <laughs> Sorry, and de Beauvoir. Yeah. <laughs> the 19th century philosopher, philosophers Soren Kierkegaard and Friedrich Nietzsche and Dostoevsky came to be seen as precursors of the movement. So it was a broad term, only self adopted by a few philosophers. A lot of philosophers rejected the term, and a lot of the predecessors, like Nietzsche and Kierkegaard, had not even heard of the term. As much as it was a philosophical movement, it was also a cultural movement. And this is shown by how much of it is reflected and And given to us through literature. A lot of the main existentialist material are literary books rather than strict philosophical works. Many key existential works are actually literary rather than philosophical. By the mid 1970s, the cultural image of existentialism had become cliche. So we can see people say, wow, that's so existential in movies or books. So, it is sometimes suggested, therefore, that existentialism、uh, is a bygone cultural movement rather than an identifiable philosophical position. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I think it has some merit to that. What is it? From Wikipedia, if you want just a basic definition, here it is Existentialism is a form of philosophical inquiry. That explores the problem of human existence and centers on the experience of thinking, feeling, and acting. In the view of the existentialist, the individual's starting point has been called the existential angst, a sense of dread, disorientation, confusion, or anxiety in the face of an apparently meaningless or absurd world. Existentialism, sorry, existentialist thinkers. Frequently explore issues related to the meaning, purpose, and value of human existence. If you've ever felt a sense of anxiety with regard to your meaning on Earth, or a sense of angst, existential dread, or confusion related to what is the meaning of life and what is the value of your experience, then you may be an existentialist. So, there is an inherently absurd quality to life if you are looking at it from a philosophical point of view. This is a very beautiful way to summarize the absurdity from Pascal, not an existentialist, but still a very interesting paragraph here. Let's read it. When I consider the brief span of my life absorbed into the eternity which precedes and will succeed it, The small space I occupy, in which I see swallowed up in the infinite immensity of spaces of which I know nothing and which know nothing of me, I take fright and am amazed to see myself here rather than there. There is no reason for me to be here rather than there, now rather than then. So there's this inherently confusing and absurd quality to our existence. It may also be existentialism, that is, may also be characterized 
by loneliness. As Walter Kaufman, author of A Very Good Existentialist Reader, man stands alone in the universe, responsible for his condition, likely to remain in a lowly state, but free to reach above the stars. That's true. And there's an indescribable element to existentialism because there's a sort of recognition that everything is meaningless. So you cannot adopt a particular school of thought. You cannot really stake out a position because defending that position would require you to utilize values and reasoning, which you already know is meaningless and not real. So they say, the refusal to belong to any school of thought, the repudiation of the adequacy of any body of beliefs whatever, and especially of systems, and a marked dissatisfaction with traditional philosophy as superficial, academic, and remote from life. That is the heart of existentialism, according to Walter Kaufman. And you can see that with the emphasis on literary work rather than purely philosophical writings. So I wanted to highlight a couple of these literary works because I don't think it's very valuable to really break down existential positions, philosophically speaking. It's better to read some books like literature, which um, can give you a sense about what it is. So The Trial by Franz Kafka, written in 1914, but not published until 1925, a year after Kafka's death. The Trial is the terrifying tale of Joseph K., a respectable bank officer who is suddenly and inexplicably arrested and must defend himself against a charge about which he can get no information. So whether this is read as an existential tale, a parable, or a prophecy of the excess of modern bureaucracy wedded to the madness of totalitarianism, the trial has resonated with chilling truth for generations of readers. Yes, I read this book and I remember just being struck by the feeling of hopelessness that you face when you're trying to navigate endless modern bureaucracy. And it feels like you are sort of on trial for something, even though you haven't done anything wrong. And nobody tells you why you have to do all these things, which you don't even understand. It's an existential position. Another uh, work. This is actually philosophical, it's not literary, but it's the myth of Sisyphus. It's inspired by a famous myth of a man who was punished by the gods. He had to push a rock up a mountain and watch it roll back down. He had to do this for all of eternity. And in this book, Camus argues that the value of life is still attainable even in a world without religious meaning. You can attain this value by essentially rebelling against absurdity and finding happiness and being creative. And it's a complicated uh, work, but I remember reading it and being quite impressed uh, by the uniqueness. And sometimes it's just great to read something which you had never thought of before. So the myth of Sisyphus was uh, Definitely that kind of book for me. And there's Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky, also a book about a lot of existential angst. angst. <laughs> Notes is considered by many to be one of the first existentialist novels. It presents itself as an excerpt from the rambling memoirs of a bitter, isolated, unnamed narrator who is a retired civil servant living in St. Petersburg. One of the most remarkable characters in literature, the unnamed narrator, is a former official who has defiantly withdrawn into an underground existence in complete retreat from society. He scrawls a passionate, obsessive, self-contradictory narrative that serves as a devastating attack on the social utopianism and an assertion of man's essentially irrational nature. 
I would say this book definitely shows a lot of the loneliness and the absurdity which we talked about before because he retreats underground and he's writing on this notebook and it's totally irrational and contradictory and there's no grand narrative and um, it's a quite interesting but uh, I was going to tell you the end but I won't ruin the end for you you have to read it and finally I think this is important in terms of existentialism because a lot of the existentialist stuff doesn't necessarily work if you are religious because you can just say well I actually think that life has meaning. I believe in God. I believe there is good and we should be pursuing the good. And that's the meaning. That's the value. Um, we can find value in God's glory on earth. So that's your religious meaning. And yeah, that's totally possible. It might be true, but the uh, philosophical climate that we have now denies this. In our culture, we have sort of, according to Nietzsche, through rationality and science and other means, have killed God. So he says, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives? Who will wipe this blood off? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must we ourselves not become gods simply to appear worthy of it? And this is a very interesting paragraph to read because it's, it's very strange to consider what has happened in the past uh, 150 years in the Western culture without God. Has any of this kind of come true? What do you think? Do you think people today try to become gods themselves? Do you think they struggle with um, guilt? Uh, do you think they wonder, like, they're searching for something holy and mighty in the world? Are they comforting themselves for having killed God and for missing God. It's all very interesting and it's an existential question. Let's go back to the very beginning of this introduction to existentialism. We can see that it was as much of a literary phenomena as a philosophical one. And that's shown by some of the books I just showed you. I hope that you read those books, by the way. I think you will learn a lot from them. And go back to this. What is it? It's the existential angst, the dread, the disorientation, confusion, anxiety in a meaningless world. It's related to finding meaning, purpose, and value. So that's existentialism. If you understood that whole lecture, your English is very good. If not, please tell me which words you don't understand or which phrases. I'll try to help you out. So that's all. I hope that you find meaning in your life and keep on learning.